Thanks amazing today. songwriter, amazing singer. Thanks, Maggie. How do you Thanks. feel after singing that? I feel Are good. You, do you, you feel still? I well, kind of still. <laughs> you guys were talking about uh, taking a vacation, yeah. and that song comes out of you know Psalm forty six ten. Be still and know that mm -hmm. I am God. I read one time that the the Latin translation of that is vacate oh. and know that I am God. And when I when I heard that, I thought, I think sometimes God is saying to me, Caroline. How if you take a vacation from thinking that you are God, yeah. that you have to control situations and outcomes and people and perceptions, just take a vacation. Yeah. And, and remember being that a mom, you feel like you always have to have the answers, right? Y yes, <laughs> although you can ask my kids. They're pretty clear on the fact that I don't, but, <laughs> but I do try. Yeah, so yeah, it's easy to get into that mindset that yeah. you have to know it all and you don't. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to talk about your book. Okay. Because it's been, I, I mean, I've been reading and I just, I was telling you in the green room, I just, been totally amazed by it. Mm -hmm. It's been, a, it was a great book. And uh, so Theology in Aisle 7. Now tell me, you've been writing for Christianity Today for a while. This is a compilation of 25 of your columns over the years. How did right. you start off with Christianity Today? Because it's a great magazine. Thanks. Yeah, it is. I got to know them in, in my music role. I, I got to know one of the editors there. He had interviewed me a few times about my about my music. Yeah. And then he, no he noticed that I like to write things that aren't set to music. Yeah. And so he started getting me to write film reviews uh, for them, which oh. has been a fun thing. Oh, so, okay. yeah. And then when Philip Yancey, who I love, oh, yeah. wrote a column, just one of my heroes, wrote a column for them for years and years, he decided he was going to stop writing the column. And uh, they threw, threw my name into the ring uh, to be a columnist for them. And I think probably most of the committee went, Hmm, a musician writing a column, how's that going to go? Yeah. But, so they said, you, you can do it for a year. And uh, I think now it's the fourth or fifth year that I'm, that I'm doing it. So it's been a really and fun you adventure. you write so well. And so I wonder, is there, is there a huge change that you have to make in writing songs? And now you're writing these columns? Or what's that like? Well, it's definitely a different process. Yeah. When, you're, when you're a songwriter, you're learning to distill and focus and you know, say one thing in mm -hmm. three and a half minutes. And when you write you know, books or columns, you can, you can blossom out. So, out yeah. so sometimes it's tricky changing gears. But I think, you know, I used to think, oh, I'm so scattered. I like to do so many different things. And a friend of mine said, no, you, you're about communication. Mm. You're, you, know, you're, you like to use words and music. Um, to try to explore important things, and so that made me feel more coherent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like, I'm about communication. Speaking about your love of words, you say in the introduction, words are sacred, and when they're used truthfully or beautifully, or best of all, incarnationally, they cause us to consider and even experience our Creator. Yeah. Explain yeah. that a little bit more. Well, I think it's really significant that, that God gave us humans language mm. and that, that he called, when he sent his son, he called him the word made flesh. So there's something about this conversation we're having right now and the conversations everybody at home will have today that can actually, um, in some way, if we're really listening for, for um, God's movement in our lives and in our friends' lives and in our families' lives, those words, those conversations we have can help us encounter the word yeah. made of flesh. Yeah. And that's exactly what this book is about, finding those God moments every single day. What is everyday spirituality? What does that mean? Everyday spirituality is, I, I think it's been, I've been realizing the last few years, there's this term spiritual formation that mm. people use sometimes about, yeah. you know, trying to grow as a follower of Jesus, those yeah. of us who have decided to follow Jesus. And I've realized that spiritual formation of some sort is happening every single day. We're, we're formed by the conversations we have, the shows we watch on TV, the music we listen to, the stuff that happens with our families, uh, all of it, the magazines we pick up, it's all forming us. And so everyday spirituality for, for a Christian, for someone who's decided to follow Jesus is going, you know what? I'm going to try to be intentional about what forms me. I'm going to try to wake myself up mm. to uh, the voice of God in my life, the Holy Spirit through His Son. And, um, and really keep my ear to the ground, keep, yeah. try to listen. And, um, and when you do that, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm intermittent. Sometimes I just get lost in the chaos and the routine. But when I, when I ask him to wake me up, it's amazing how a day goes from something you just have to survive mm -hmm. and get through and items you got to check off on your mm -hmm. to-day list to like just this day fraught with grace and God's movement and his sleight of hand and, and um, just detecting God and what's going on around us. And it's listening to that, right? And seeing 
those God elements every single day, which I have to admit is a challenge. Because as you said, you're rushing through, you wanna get everything done, you have your checklist, and I see that you do it so well, because I mean, in this book you talk from about everything from sloths to movies to <laughs> you know how you find these God moments and, and see God's lessons through everything. And so how do you do, like how do you actually do that? Because I think God is always speaking to us. So how yeah. do we actually tune in and be still and hear what he's saying. Well, thanks for saying I'm good at it. I'm actually, I'm actually not, which is why I have to write songs and <laughs> columns and books telling myself, wake up, wake up, wake up, right? So yeah, I, I think it starts in the morning. I think, mm. uh, I, I think it was C.S. Lewis who said, the, the biggest challenge of the day is before you, before you get out of bed and your feet touch the floor, uh, pushing back all those voices that come crowding at you and saying, God, this is a day that I want to spend with you, listening to you. Mm. And then resetting all, all day long, you know? And when you realize, oh my goodness, the last three hours, mm. I have been off in la la land, yeah, you know, yeah. in some kind of headspace that isn't where I want to be. Instead of beating yourself up over that, just resetting, recalibrating, mm. letting really, uh, also realizing that God's not the object, he's the subject, mm -hmm. and really just letting him reset us and going to him and saying, oh, I drifted off again, but, but I'm coming back. So do you have one example? I mean, we have 25 examples, of this, uh. but do you have one example of how God has just said, yeah, let's reset. Carolyn, you, you need to be listening to what I'm saying. I think I think pretty much everything is fair fair game for that. I mean, the, yeah. the title of the book comes from uh, Theology in Aisle 7. It comes from my great affection for office supply stores. Yes. Yes. I, I, I did read about that. Yes. And I also have, I have to say, when I go into some of these office supply stores, I get a little happy. You get, you get Just, that rush? Yes. Yes. I love pens, pencils, yes. Yes. paper. Yes. For me, it's the organizational aids, yep. which at my, my, the staples in my hometown is in aisle seven. Okay. So I love aisle seven because I'm not organized at all. And I go to aisle seven and I look at the organizational aids and I think, oh, this is the thing that's mm. gonna get my life under control. So one day I brought home this box thing that had all these slots and I thought, this is gonna, my life is gonna get totally under control. And my uh, husband said, that honey is a junk collector. And I said, <laughs> yeah, but it'll be organized junk. Anyway, while I was thinking about my, my passion to be organized, I, I realized I felt like uh, right at the same time I was signing up for this systematic theology course. Mm. And I, I realized through some conversations with some friends and staring at this organizational item in my kitchen that I have this tendency to try to organize God and control mm -hmm. him. And like I was saying before, make him the object rather than the subject. And, and a stupid little box like that full of my junk, I hear God saying, you know what? Uh, I'm in control here. Mm -hmm. And if I sometimes transcend your understanding, if sometimes I'm hard to un uh, uh, understand, if sometimes I'm about mystery, that's okay, mm -hmm. I'm God. Um, so I don't know, crazy stuff like that. He yeah. has a way of speaking to me. How do you translate that to your children? Because that's, you know, ultimately as a mom too, you wanna be able to allow them to learn to, to see that and to see those God moments as well. I think, uh, you know, it's funny. I, uh, I, my husband and I were married for a long time before we had kids mm -hmm. and we thought it was because God was waiting until we were, uh, you know, wise enough that we would be able to teach a kid something. And then when we finally had kids, we realized, oh no, God has so much to <laughs> teach us through our kids. Yeah. And I think, Staying in that teachable mo mode with our kids, we were joking before about not knowing everything, yeah. but about, you know what, sometimes I don't know the answer to that. Let's pray about it, let's, mm. let's go to God's word, let's talk about it, let's imagine about it, let's try to listen to God. Um, man, my kids, my kids have more to teach me in that area, I think, than I even have them. But hopefully, hopefully, more days than not, we're kind of living that, that seeking after God in our home and they're picking it up. Yeah. One of the, uh, we only have a few minutes left, but one of the stories or columns in here that really touched me was chapter 10 when you talk about the prodigal son. And we, I mean, there, we can't uh, assume that everybody knows the story of the prodigal son. So, you know, we're talking about the story of this man with uh, two sons and you want to jump in there and yeah. tell us the rest? Yeah, <clears throat> Jesus tells this story to, to the people that are gathered, gathered around him. There's a father, he's got two sons. The youngest son says, dad, I want my inheritance now. I want to go off and sow some 
some wild oats. And he goes off and gets himself into a whole world of trouble, figures that his dad will probably want to disown him, mm -hmm. finally comes limping back home and his dad runs to him. I think, I think in the Bible that is one of the most beautiful oh, yeah. lines. While he was still a long way off, mm -hmm. the father ran to the son and threw his arms around him because Jesus is saying, you want to know what God's like? You want to know what my father's like? That's what he's like. Mm. But for me, and we were talking about and this, me too. we yeah. have always related to the older yes. son. Well, how come the older son doesn't get a party? And, yeah. you know, yeah. and realizing, uh, you know how the, the, the father says to the older son, come help me throw a party mm -hmm. for the younger son. I have started to realize that I think God thinks it is the ultimate blessing to include us in helping him throw his party mm. and invite the whole world in. And so um, when God says to us, come with me, help me throw a party, help yeah. tell the world about who I am and my love for them, that is the ultimate blessing to get, yeah. to get involved in God's family business and, and work. Actually, he, he gives us the dignity, including us and what he's up to, that's, that's pretty cool. And that's an honor, I mean, to be able to be called by the King of Kings and said, and, and be told, yeah, I want you to help me throw this party. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge honor, but I had never seen it that way. Me either. Never until, seen it until, that way. Yeah. Always seen it as, yeah, this older son that just got the, the short end of Kinda the stick, really. Yeah. yeah.